Just hit the field. All right. Just wanted to talk, that's all. High fly ball. Deep right field. Carroll back. Track. Wall. It was game seven of 162, and the Yankees were finishing off a road trip in Arizona. Carlos Rodon on the mound, making his second start of 2024. How would it shake out? My recap, your reactions coming up next. This is NYY Recaps. Welcome to Yankee Stadium, New York City. Just when they thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Walter Garcia says another heart attack. Yeah, that was a uh, anxiety inducing game. Uh, so welcome back, TK. Reminder that the Yankees are off tomorrow, so we will still have a voicemail show, but there is no recap. This morning, the most concerned voicemails I had were about uh, Alex Verdugo and Aaron Judge, and they both hit home runs. And uh, TK, you're getting quite the fan club in the comments here. Last couple of times you've been on, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty well. I mean, feeling feeling good after that win, that's for sure. Um, big exhale there, and yeah, those comments are very nice. It's encouraging to see. I, I've enjoyed every time I've come on here so far. So six and one on the road trip for the Yankees. So yesterday we talked about how the game was boring, about how the Yankees did absolutely nothing offensively. And uh, the D-backs kind of had their way with us. Well, today, anything but boring, anxiety-ridden game, extra inning game, lots of runners, several home runs, including the first home run of the year from both Aaron Judge and Alex Verdugo as we take a look at the Aaron Judge home run in slow motion. Big error from Anthony Volpe in the bottom of the 10th, opened the door for a two-run comeback by the Diamondbacks, but then the Yankees came back on with help from a balk and then a big double from... Uh, Aaron Judge, we take a look at the highlights. You see serving up a home run there from uh, Rodon to Marte. Marte got every bit of that. The pickoff here. What do you think of this pickoff? Oh, yeah, that was a good move right there. I mean, um, what the hell is he thinking on the base path? <laughs> You're in scoring position there. Right. Um, that, that was a bit of a gimme, uh, a bit of a gift from the Diamondbacks. But, hey, I'll take it. I don't care. Yeah. And out's and out. So. Yeah, nice play by Johnny Lasagna there. And then Verdugo, up and in pitch, 96 miles an hour. He hits it about, what, about 15 rows deep in right field. I mean, that was an absolute shot that put the Yankees out in front. Unfortunately, uh, D-backs came right back. This was a chopper over Clay Holmes, uh, and Volpe makes an incredible effort, just a balls-to-the-wall effort. Couldn't get there. Balk with Soto at the plate, run scores to give the Yankees the lead in the top of the 11th, and then Aaron Judge gets an up-and-in fastball, inside outs it, gets it by the center fielder to score the sixth run. Yankees come around to win, and they will head home 6-1. and one. So, you feeling good about this team after the first road trip, TK? Absolutely. How could you not? Um, if you were going to tell me in the middle of spring training that we were going to come out of the opening road series with – the first series being a four-game set in Houston, and the second series being against a team that went to the World Series last year. Yes, without Garrett Cole also mentioning that, and yeah. DJ LeMayu. Yes, I'd feel incredibly good about 6-1. and one. I mean, how could you not? I, I can't sit here and say there's any sort of bad vibes heading into the op home opener. Um, I know it's super early, and there's a whole lot of season to play. It's a pretty small sample size, but seasons can be won and seasons can be lost in April. Um, I think that's pretty evident in the past. We've seen that. I think it was the 85 Tigers that had like a 35 and 5 35 start. 35 and 5, sick. And yeah, and they just, they played 500 the rest of the year and they won the World Series. So same thing with us. Last couple, was it 2021? We had an amazing start to the season. 22, 22. maybe. 22. Yeah, 22. An amazing start to the season, then 500, but you still won the division because of that amazing start. So it's important yeah. to get the ball rolling, getting the feel going, and uh, hopefully they keep it going in the Bronx. Yeah, I'd much rather be in the Yankees' position than the position the Mets are in right now. They started off 0-4. I didn't see what they did today. Yeah. But let's talk about this game. Right, we got a lot go. to get through. Let's get it going. All right, so Cattell Marte led the game off with a double, but very nice job from Carlos Rodon of pitching out of it. A couple of ground balls. He had a strikeout on a 97-mile-an-hour fastball to Christian Walker. Second inning, not so good. Served up a home run to Blaze Alexander. Real quick, what do you think of the name Blaze? No pun intended. I think that's kind of a fire name. 
Yeah, it's sick. Uh, the Red Sox actually have a Blaze Jordan in their yeah. uh, in their system, which I think is even cooler. So, but that's a cool baseball name, Blaze. It is. I don't it know. really is. It just sounds right. Baseball's got great names: Three Finger Mordecai Brown, you know, all that yeah. stuff. But anyway, I thought uh, Rodon's stuff was good from the very start. A lot of late swings. He was getting pop ups. When guys are late, they're going to hit the ball in the air. Pop ups. Uh, he was throwing strikes that allowed him to get deeper into the game today than he went versus the Astros. Still not super deep. Uh, Merrill Kelly was great early, but in the uh, fourth inning, Glaber uh, Torres singled, and then Aaron Judge stepped up to the plate. Wow. Opposite field shot. First of the season, 396 feet. The ball went for a swim, either in the pool or the jacuzzi. It was only a matter of time. And honestly, I don't even think he hit that that well. We've seen him hit it even much better than that to the opposite field. So I still think he's coming around. Uh, but, uh, you know, can everybody back off of Aaron Judge now? You know, we people giving him a hard time because he had kind of a slow start. But... You're a young man. You're you seem like a patient man, a well thought out uh, personality. Can we preach a little bit of patience, please, Terrence? Absolutely. Uh, and you're right. That home run, he definitely didn't get all of that. Um, but that just speaks to the type of player that he is. You know, he didn't really get a whole lot of that pitch, and it still sort of floated out there. Um, and Chase Field is a pitcher's park. Th- those are some huge outfield gaps. So. Uh, yeah, he spent the last, what was it? The last like two weeks of spring training. He didn't really get a ton of at bats. He was dealing with that, uh, oblique thing they had an MRI for and being super cautious with him. So yeah, he's still kind of rounding out in the form. Um, he's a notoriously slow starter. I think uh, Yankee fans need to understand the year he hit, uh, 62 home runs. I think he only had like one home run through the first 13 games or something like that. Um, so just guys, he's the captain of the team. He's the highest paid player on the team for a reason. He probably won't be after this year because Juan Soto will be a Yankee, hopefully. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, guys, he's going to be fine. Just give it some time. Frankie says, leave Aaron Judge alone. <laughs> Expect that he's going to eat you up. And definitely that pitch was kind of a meatball from time to stop Carlos Rodon. Yep. Rodon got out of the inning. He picked off Corbin Carroll going to third base. Bad base running there from Corbin Carroll. You never make the last out at third base, especially not in a tie game, and even more especially with your cleanup hitter at the plate. So he kind of let Rodon off the hook there. Rodon was done after five and a third innings. You could see him kind of running out of gas in the sixth, just unable to spot the fastball. But uh, overall, I thought he did a nice job. What do you think? Uh, yeah, overall, he, I thought sometimes there were maybe some consistency issues. A couple of his pitches seemed a little flat to me, but he made it work. Sometimes you don't have all your stuff. Again, another one of those guys who I think is rounding out into season form. Um, it's just good to see him healthy, first of all. I mean, when we signed him, those were some question marks. After last season, those were some more question marks. Question marks. So, like, the fact that he's actually going out there and pitching is a, obviously a good sign. He doesn't look like he's nursing any sort of injuries, which is yeah. something you need to look out for with this guy. And we need him to be that second ace that we signed. We really need that. So, so far, so good. Just continue building on each start uh, incrementally, and then hopefully – I don't know, maybe by May we're having some legit seven-inning like yeah. shutout starts that he's been capable of in the past. Do you think he p- pitched well enough to play the hype reel? Should we play the hype reel? I think ah, we'll play fuck the hype it. Reel. Why not? Let's I'm going to do it. <laughs> Job well done. And take a look at some of his in-game action here. Five and a third inning, seven hits, two runs, two earned, three strikeouts, two home runs allowed. He's got a 2.79 ERA through two starts. His ERA was 2.88 with the Giants in 2022. So that's basically how he's going to pitch when he's at the top of his game. He might not go deep into games. You know, he might occasionally give you seven innings or something like that. But if he'll give you six, I think, with like one or two runs most days, I think you have to take that. Another guy we got to talk about is Ian 
frickin' Hamilton. Two and two-thirds scoreless innings, no hits, no walks, four strikeouts. TK, how good was Ian Hamilton today? Oh, dude, his stuff looked filthy. Um, moving everywhere, he was the command was there, spotting it up. Also, what's impressive when you see from relievers is their ability to give you some length. Uh, that's not typically something you see with relievers, especially in today's game. They go one inning and they're done. So the fact that he gave you two and two thirds is really nice. Uh, was a huge help this uh, game just to eat some innings. Um, and yeah, I thought his stuff looked great. Great call by Derek before the season. We were talking about closers and you'd mentioned Ian Hamilton as a possible name, yeah. but I, think he has the stuff for it to close. And I think he probably will close at some point when they need him to. Uh, but I like the multi inning role he has. Yeah. I do think if, if Holmes goes down with like an injury or something, I think Hamilton is like that next guy that steps in, but one of the nastiest relief appearances that, We've seen in years from a Yankees pitcher, so I want to give him a little a little hype there. Get the little Patrick Bateman going. The Slambio, he was not only getting awesome break, but he was spotting it. So, uh, you know, if, if he was a starting pitcher, we would have said today that he had no-hit stuff. Top 10, Alex Verdugo with the Manfred runner on second base. First pitch of extra innings. Mammoth shot. 96 up and in. And lift off, baby. Lift off. Did you hear that the Yankees are cutting down on the amount of chains that he's allowed to wear? There was a report that they told him, like he was wearing like I don't know, 25 goddamn chains, and they told him, hey, yeah, cut it I'm, back to a reasonable amount of chains. I I am familiar that he likes chains. I think his, like, picture, uh, his player picture is literally him, like, holding it out like this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I have one on. He's, like, literally holding it like this, and there's, like, six of them with, like, a big 24 on it. Look, guy wants to, I, you know, he just wants to have a good time, look good. I don't really care if you perform well on the on the field. I understand the Yankees, it's a bit different. The haircut rule, the no beard yeah. rule, they're, they're a bit more run that way. And if he's like, yeah, whatever, I'll wear less. Um, yeah. That's kind of a, a big nothing burger to me. So stick around in the chat. we got the belt coming up. Uh, but the D-backs did come back. They got a run on an error by Volpe, just a bad throw, tried to rush it, kind of dropped his arm a little bit. Uh, runner got to third on a wild pitch by Clay Holmes and then came around to score on an infield hit from – Corbin Carroll, nice effort by Volpe on that play. Look, um, I don't think the blown save was Clay Holmes' fault. Uh, I, I, there was a great tweet by Aiden, who was on the show the other night, and it basically said he questions the sustainability of having a ground ball pitcher taking the mound in extras when uh, there's a runner starting on second base. I agree with that 100%. It's too easy for runners to move over and score that way. I do think Clay Holmes is a good pitcher, but I think I'd rather see him in that middle relief kind of Michael King role because of the ground balls. You know, you get ground balls for the fifth, sixth inning or the sixth and seventh inning for two innings. I'd rather see that a few times a week than him trying to close and give us a heart attack every night. A hundred percent agree. I, I honestly couldn't have put it better myself because I've actually had this thought even going back to the last few years when we acquired him is that he is a ground ball pitcher. So whenever that extra inning came around, I was always like Holmes is a problem because yeah. you're going to have too much traffic on the bases. And what you want out of your closer is a guy who's just going to come out and throw a straight smoke and just strike guys yeah. out because you need to, you need those outs quickly, which is why I mentioned, I think closer will be in need at the deadline, not because Holmes isn't performing well, but just because I think they're a guy short, especially on the back end of the bullpen yeah, to slide everybody up. I agree. And I mean, keep an eye out for somebody who comes up through the minor leagues. If the Yankees are this good at turning these nobody relievers into excellent pitchers, you know, maybe they'll find somebody within their own system. Also, Nick Birdie's a guy who's shown potential to be a back end of the, you know, uh, relief core kind of guy too. So the Yankees got two more in the 11th inning. First was on a balk with the with runner on third, and then Aaron Judge roped a double into the gap that made it 6-4. Now. The D-backs did make it interesting in the bottom half, but they got caught in an awkward position. They had to pinch hit a position or a pitcher uh, with the game on the line, and it worked out about as expected and with a strikeout. And the Yankees win and go six and one on the road trip. Oh, game over. Yankees win. Yeah, 
Now, uh, something we like to do on this channel, we've only had co-hosts or guests on for the post game a few times throughout the history of this channel, but with you being part of the West Coast crew now and coming on for West Coast games, uh, I thought it would be good to get your feet wet and give you a really tough decision for the belt winner today. We got a lot of people in the chat, over 900 in the chat with Twitter. We got over 1,000 watching, and they are all on pins and needles. Let us know who you got for the belt. I think for the belt, we got to go co-belts, right? Uh, co-belts? Give, give me a Ian Hamilton and Aaron Judge for the co-belts for today's game. Let's go. They deserved it, both of them. Uh, both played huge parts in winning this game. Obviously, Judge with the home run and then, uh, you know, the big hit. And Ian Hamilton giving them, eating some innings uh, just to keep them alive because that game definitely could have spiraled out of control if he didn't turn into a performance like that. So, so first time doing belts and we're, we're making me change my format and we're going with the first yeah. co-belts of the year. But I'll take it. So, uh, all right. So, how, overall, how you feeling about the road trip? Let's go ahead and put uh, the stats for Carlos Rodon on because he's made two starts. What have you seen so far from him this year? Overall, the road trip's a massive success. His numbers look great. Anything sub three RA is nice to look at. Um, as I said before, we just need him to gain the confidence, which I think he did out there. He competed. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but when he got the hook from Boone, was he barking at Boone trying to? He, when was. he was getting him out? Right, he, he was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, sometimes that can be not great if you make a huge theatrical thing out of it. But I like the passion. I like the fire. You know, and like, nah, this is my game. Leave me in here. So I, I, I kind of appreciate that. Sure, and that's his personality. Whenever he pitches, and when he's lights out, when he's on, he's like. He's like actually like a crazy person. He's he's talking to himself on the mound. He's yelling, and you want to see that from him. Cole is much more like subtle about it. Yeah, he has just a presence about him. Rodon's like screaming like an animal when yeah. he's on. Yeah, I think people channel energy in different ways, right? Garrett Cole yeah. has this stoic, stoic presence, and you can see everything is in every pitch, right? And and he he doesn't spill out the emotion except in those really big spots. We'll see it once in a while, but. You know, I think in order for Rodon to pitch, he's kind of got to operate on the fringes of the high portion of his energy level, right? That's part of who he is. You know, Roger Clemens was the same way. He would yell and get feisty. And um, let me think, uh, who was some? Randy Johnson, you know, was like yeah. that too. He would strike somebody out and, and go Max crazy. Scherzer's like that. Max Scherzer. Yeah, I yeah. think like when you're when you're a max effort kind of pitcher, and every pitch is delivered with as much force as you can possibly generate. That does something inside to your energy, and it's almost impossible for it not to spill out. Now, him barking at Boone, we don't know what he said. Like, I don't know if he was motherfucking Boone or if he was like, just like, yeah, whatever. Or if he was just like, no, I want to yeah. stay in, but like, I really do. Or I just want to look food for the cameras, you know? Like, who who, who knows what he what he was actually saying, well, but we'll I want the competitive spirit. Boy. John Boy's gonna have to do the lip reading for it, and we'll find out yeah. in a few days. So, yeah, we'll find out. Uh, that's great. Yeah, yeah I, but I want I want a pitcher who wants to stay in the game, who who is gonna make you drag him off the field. So, uh, Yankees home opener is on Friday. It's at one o'clock, though. I believe this guy says Friday night. I think it's at one o'clock on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I can look at that oh, one second. Let's just double check. Let's get a double check in the chat too. But uh, let me go ahead and pull up the box score here in just a second. I'm gonna. I don't. I, I'm unprepared because it was a such a crazy game. My attention was turned away. All right, I'm gonna put it up. So we, the Yankees got eight hits on the day. It's one one oh five on Friday. It says on the one oh five. By the way, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. let's go ahead and uh, the share screen is not working. Um, hang on, let me just sh let me figure this out real quick. That is not working. All right. Well, we're not going to do box scores, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. That's the second time in a row I've had issues. I must have deleted my box score button, too. So, um, all right. Yankees got eight hits. Arizona got nine hits. Multi-hit games from Torres, Judge, and Rizzo. Judge had three RBIs. Uh, Soto, 0 for 5. Tough day. Didn't walk either. Uh, so, his average drops down to a more pedestrian 345. Wells one for four. I thought he had some good swings. Not only line drive single, he drove the ball that was caught on the warning yeah. track. He's done that a couple of times. I think when the weather heats up, he might pick up a few more home runs. What do you think? 
Yeah, he's an Arizona guy. That's where he went to school. Um, he, I think, you know, I actually I just put that together. He went to U of A and they were playing in Arizona. So maybe he's used to the weather out there. But yeah, he's, I think he's got nice offensive tools. What surprised me the most about him is his defense. Um, even that throw down to Rizzo was like closer than I thought it would be um, when he threw it down to first there. Um, made some couple nice defensive blocks but yeah offensively the bat will come around with him i think he's kind of displayed pretty pure hitter sort of uh, ability um you know and he's a lefty bat which plays well in yankee stadium as we all know so but that's something that this is so random but with wells dominguez peraza can we get these guys real numbers what's good yeah 88 I, 89 what's up you know right i agree with you 100 percent. and then uh, you know probably on the team now Peraza's 91. That's something they, they used to do in spring training. And now it's like, you know. They, like he's on the team, right? Right. Get, like show some respect. I agree. I agree 100%. So you see the box score there. Ian Hamilton, I mean, just fantastic job. Luiza got another scoreless inning. Look at the Yankees bullpen. All 0.00 ERAs so far. That's a pretty damn good road trip. That's oh, yeah, an we, like, we like to see that. Underrated part of the road trip. So. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. Yankees win six to five. So, uh, of the guys who are underperforming, uh, I guess we got well, Rizzo heated up a little bit today. Judge heated up, obviously, with a couple of hits. And Verdugo starting to heat up with a home run. Verdugo's still hitting 160. But I feel like we got some guys coming around. Torres had two hits. So, like, this is exactly where you want to be as you go into the home opener for a homestand. You want Rizzo heating up. You want Judge heating up. And, you know, Soto, I, I feel like just an 0-for-5 day or whatever is probably the anomaly for him. I don't think that he's all of a sudden cold, just kind of how the numbers work out. Sometimes you go 0-for-5. That's why nobody has a 162-game hitting streak. So, hey, uh, I'll take it. Series, uh, series goes to the Yanks. So Astros and Diamondbacks, two very good teams. Now we got the Blue Jays. Coming up. Uh, for some reason, it seems like the Blue Jays have the Yankees number, but their offense doesn't feel super strong to me. They got a lot of righties. I feel like Stroman's going to be throwing ground ball after ground ball with that sinker down and in, getting guys to hammer it right to third, right to short. You're going to see a lot of action from Volpe over there. Um, I, I think he's going to keep the ball in the ballpark on Friday. And then after that, we got Clark Schmidt on Saturday and Luis Heal on Sunday. Sunday should be a great one. I'm looking forward to seeing what Heal can do. What do you think about his uh, – his performance the other night dude electric actually yeah. like he's got electric stuff with pitchers i feel sometimes you can give me all the analytics you want all the numbers all the statistics and the spin rates and all that jazz but sometimes you watch a guy throw and it just comes out of the hand a little different and the fastball has a little extra ride at the end um and the breaking stuff sharper curves on it uh he looked really really good it was very encouraging to see i thought he looked good even pre tommy john um when he first came up but then he got the surgery and you, know, you obviously start to get a little concerned there if it throws off his development but i don't know what he is um i don't know if he's a starter or a reliever because when cole comes back and when hopefully he does somebody's getting pushed out of the rotation and does that make he could he'll be an elite reliever with the stuff he has could he be a closer because he's got closer stuff let me ask you this though if you got to win a game you got to get a good start out of somebody would you rather go with Luis Heald throws 100 miles an hour or would you rather go with Nestor Cortez who's got to reach into his bag of tricks right now I feel like Nestor Cortez would be my pick for the bullpen uh, at this point a good lefty right. who can give you multiple innings out of the bullpen he was you know a solid guy when he was pitching out of the bullpen for the Yanks uh, I, I would be perfectly fine with dropping him and going with heel in the rotation. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, I guess that just means you're accepting the reality that the season Nestor Cortez was an all-star. That was a fluke. You know, then you're accepting that's not the yeah. player that he is, you know? Well, I mean, it, it's a couple of years later. He's uh, He's been around the league. I, I'm not arguing that, that he has fallen off significantly or that he's significantly worse. I just think the league catches up to everybody. And when you yeah. throw 92 and you don't have, you know, especially great stuff, you have to be able to hit your spots. And he's just not doing that as much as he used to. Yeah, I just don't think we've really seen length out of heel yet. Um, and that's not his fault. 
you know, he's a young pitcher. Just I think they're easing him into it. But uh, if Heal shows me he can pitch seven innings and be like a really effective pitcher in six of those innings, then yeah, I would absolutely have him in the starting rotation. You'd be silly not to. Um, but if Nestor starts to show you something that he's going to be Nestor that we've seen and that we hope that he is, I wouldn't mind having Heal being a really a reliever because the I mean the velocity in which he throws with is is reliever stuff really. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's tidy this up because I think everybody wants to get to their dinner. That was a tough uh, tough game to sit through because of the anxiety. So let's yes. wrap it. I gotta get out of here. Honestly, I, I thought about staying longer, but I'm hungry yeah, myself. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty hungry also. I I, I gotta eat. So. Ladies and gentlemen, become a subscriber. Like the video. We got 171 likes right now. We got 1,052 people in here combined, YouTube and Twitter right now. So thanks for tuning in. Obviously, subscribe. Uh, we're here after every Yankee game, and we do voicemails after pretty much every Yankee game. If I do a post game this year, my intent is to do a voicemail the next day because we get so many of them, and I'm paying for the service. I might as well do it. You know, and it gives people a little something to watch in the morning. And I want to get the community involved. So go ahead and call in 718-899-1068. We will have a voicemail show tomorrow. Terrence, see you later, my man. And we'll see you for this week in Yankees baseball Sunday night, right? Uh, yes, yes. That if is not, the case. if not, we'll see you next, if not, next time. <laughs> I, I will do, yes, I'll do everything we'll, I can to be on there. We'll figure it out. All right, guys, I'll see yeah. you later. Take care. All right. <laughs>